Here at the wind tunnel, we are going to measure the drag of several different shapes. One of them is streamlined. All these measurements will be made at exactly the same airspeed. We begin by mounting on the arm an airfoil in its proper position with a rounded nose facing the airstream. When I start the blower, I'm going to increase the speed until the drag force acting on the airfoil reaches one unit on the scale. As you saw, the drag force was one unit when the airspeed reached 210 miles per hour. In the experiments to follow, we will reproduce the same airspeed of 210 miles per hour while we measure the drag to compare with a figure of unity. I am now turning over the airfoil into its wrong position with the sharp edge facing the airflow and with the rounded edge at the rear. I haven't changed the controls so that when we start the blower we should expect the same speed as before. of 210 miles per hour, and we saw that the scale read 2.6. The drag of the airfoil the wrong way around, therefore, is about two and a half times greater than the drag when it is the right way around. Now let's take the airfoil off altogether so that we measure the drag of the rectangular support alone. Even though the cross-sectional area of this rectangular support is very much less than that of the airfoil, its drag is about four times as large. This is a circular rod, the diameter of which is exactly the same as the maximum thickness of the airfoil. So you might think of the airfoil as being the rod with an extended nose and a sharpened tail. All right, we're ready to go again. The speed once again reached 210 miles per hour, and you saw from the scale that the drag on the round rod was more than nine times as great as the drag on the airfoil having the same maximum thickness. This series of four experiments illustrates in a most striking way the value of streamlining in reducing the drag. Perhaps you remember that in the early days of airplanes, particularly when biplanes were used, that wire struts were used to stiffen and strengthen the structure of the airplane. You can well imagine from these experiments how much this added to the drag. To illustrate this point, we have prepared this frame which holds taut a wire whose diameter is about one-tenth the maximum thickness of the airfoil. I'll just slip this frame in place. Before we begin, I'd like you to notice that this frame is well clear of the jet so that we will measure only the drag of the wire. The 
drag of the wire is just about the same as the drag of the airfoil. The properly streamlined strut can be ten times thicker than a wire and yet have no more drag. So you see that there is good reason for this change in aircraft design.